industry. You say every podcast is a business, whether you treat it like one or not. Now, that's you took the words right out of my mouth. So I my philosophy is that podcasting is a tool for your business, right? It's a voice for your business. If you have a podcast, you are a brand. If you have a business, you are a brand. That brand needs a voice. The purest form of communication is a podcast. The P stands for personal. So um, tell me what you meant by that, by every podcast is a business, whether you treat it like one or not. Because there's plenty of people who do this for the fun of it. They don't care about downloads or whatever. But in an essence, it's still, it still is a business. Mm. Are you satisfying a need? Yes. Mm. Are there inputs? Yes. Are there outputs? Yes. Is there time invested? Yes. Is there resource invested? Yes. Is there more than one person involved? Most of the time. Sounds like a business to me, you know? So I just kind of, I didn't, I looked at podcasts not like a business until I started a business. Then I went, oh, this is business. This is black and white, you know? And now, as you said, pop, people can, you can have a, my pot personal podcast. I don't, I treat it like a business in the way of like, hey, we have sponsors, affiliates, things like that. Those I take a big business mindset towards, but I'm not making decisions for financial gain in that podcast, right? So it's more, it's not that every podcast is a business. It's that if you follow principles of business when making decisions, then you're going to have an easier time because it makes more sense in that context. Just because so much of it aligns with the principles of business. So that's really what, that's really what I meant by that is like, whether you treat it like one or not, it's probably better to follow business principles if you're not, even if you're not making money, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it, you're always going to follow the top, you know, who's the top. It's like the top podcast treat it like a business. So let's look at what they're doing and you break that down. It's not like they're just willy nilly. Hey, we might record today. Hey, we'll record if we feel like it tomorrow. Same thing with a business. They open their doors every day. Unless there's an issue, you're opening your doors every day, no matter how you feel about it. Right. And same thing for podcasts. You have to record. You have to record today, whether something happened to you, whether somebody cut you off, it doesn't matter. So that's kind of how I look at it in, in a business context is like, I'm not saying treat it like a business, make sure you get ROI. That's not the business stuff I'm talking about. I'm talking about principles, how you approach decision-making, how you approach people involved, how you approach guesting, how you approach, approach branding, design. I mean, half of this stuff is business. Branding you're going to go to somebody who makes logos for businesses. That's going to create your podcast logo, right? Yeah. Yep. So that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at with that. No, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very good point. Um, so it, are the people you work with, a lot of them kind of come from the same spheres. Or do you have someone who's like, Hey, I'm a commercial banker. I need a podcast for my business. Or, Hey, I sell mortgages. I need a podcast for my business or, Hey, I'm a chef. I need a podcast. Anything like that? Because I talked to a lot of those people just like, all right, what do you do? I'm thinking, okay, how, why would this person need a podcast? And it's not that hard. Actually, it's really a lot easier than you'd think. So do you run into people like that or is it kind of more of people of the same sphere? In the beginning, it was, let me get whatever I can get, right? Of course. In the beginning, I did, the first podcast I did with somebody else, for somebody else was for a marketing agency. After that, I did entertainment celebrities, which was crazy. And neither of those ended up working out or continuing. They both stopped. And so after that, I went, what did I learn in, from that? I learned too many cooks in the kitchen is bad. You never want to work with that. You never want to have more than one to two people making decisions. I don't care what the context is. No, it's 100% One correct. person no, is the point. Definitely, right? definitely. So then I go, I can't just work. I don't, I, I can work with businesses. I love businesses. I understand them. I've worked with them. It can work. But my thing is like, okay, there's no company doing this just for personal brands and trying to make it affordable for pers for solo entrepreneurs, solo brands. So those are typically the people I work with. I have a job networking show that I edit and they are a business. They have multiple hosts, but I hand, I, I, I speak with one person, you know, from the show. Then I have uh, a coach. I have a job search coach. I have a men's coach, you know, so I typically it does end up being those people who are, you know, coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, yep. people who have successful businesses that really want to get that content out there, but they might not have an entire company behind them. So when you, they're going to hire somebody for their podcast, they're, they can't hire it. They don't want to hire a team. Like that's what they're trying not to create another business. So we 
have the team in house, you know, for you. So yeah, those are the people we work with. Yeah. I mean, investment banker, chef, I can, we can create same thing as you. We can create a podcast for these guys. My system will work for almost anybody, but I found that the people like even myself, like I have a, you know, an executive assistant and project manager, that's my team. Right. So people like myself, it's like, I can't hire an entire, you know, arm of my business just to create this podcast. So I try to just solve my own issue. Really. Yeah, I talked to a lot of life coaches. Me too. Um, a lot of life coaches reached out to me. I and mean, my first question is, do you have a podcast? And a lot of them go, no. And I go, why? Why? It's like, you, you're mm-hmm. a life coach. You are a brand. You, you yourself, your name, Joe Smith or whatever, is a brand. Why don't you have a podcast? It's like, well, what would I talk about? So you're a life coach. <laughs> it's like if you if that's your question, man, like you got some other stuff to figure out, you know, like you just don't understand content or brand or creating a brand at that point. Well, it's know? simple. Like even like um, if I go to like a networking event, right, and someone is a lawyer, a lawyer have you, and they go, "What would I talk about?" I go, "Dude, you're a lawyer. Talk about previous cases. Don't use names because you can't. Like talk about cases you've personally won." that you have won, how you won them, understanding the law. If you're a um, personal injury lawyer, right? Tell certain stories or go to famous stories or uh, cases like the OJ. Do a five-part series on the OJ trial. From a lawyer, what happened, why it happened. And then in the in the podcast, run ads on your own services. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Use promo code lawyer for 10% off, like whatever. It's just like, or... If you're any other business, it's like, what would you give away for free? If you're selling life insurance, right? People like to talk to me all the time. I sell life insurance. Just like, what information would you give at a free meeting, a free consultation? That's a podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and have fun. I mean, I think yeah. that's the other portion of it too, is like people create something that's so hyper-focused on like making sales or something, and then they quit early because it wasn't fun. You yeah. missed the whole first component, which is make sure you like it. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Podcasting is a great networking tool. Like I use the, the, the biggest podcast solution is a networking tool and it's fun, right? Talk yeah. with Tara Shrek is also a networking tool and it's fun. My wrestling podcast, straight fun, right? It's just 100% fun. Um, but that being said, I did start that podcast in 2015. That was my first podcast, 2015. So the business has changed a lot from then. What changes have you noticed in your X money years in podcasting? It's a great question I asked. I'm really glad I asked it. Just pat, pat on the back for Willie T over here. If you want the answer to that question, link in the description down below. The full podcast is available now anywhere and everywhere. Podcasts can be found in biggestpodcastsolutions.com or the rest of the video, full video right here on the YouTube. Yeah, um, if you're a business and don't have a podcast, man, I don't know what to tell you. If you're a brand, influencer, whatever, you have a podcast, man, I don't want to tell you. Call me. Email me. Will at APSpodcast.com. Let's talk. Let's get that project started today. Now.